Good morning, welcome back Josh, your driving instructor, and today I'm going to give you my first-hand experience of having a VW Golf. And I'm gonna talk about this as a learner car and as a personal car as well. Please excuse the birds, the planes, and the trains. They don't seem to all understand I'm trying to do a YouTube video. <laughs> First off, my four weirdest big likes about this car compared to the other car. And the first one and most important one is this has been about what, three weeks since I originally got this car. And I'm gonna be honest, I haven't so much as brushed anything. And I'm gonna be honest, I haven't had it cleaned once. And I've just taken it for another driving test now. And as you can see, it doesn't even look that dirty. Now I can promise you if this was the Big Bertha Peugeot 208 black, it would look Disgusting. So that is my first biggest like. It looks clean or cleanish, even when it hasn't been cleaned. When she has been cleaned, she looks like a gem. My second strangest like are the seats. The seats are really firm. The Peugeot that were soft, and that does sound strange. You might be thinking, you sound like an old man. Yeah, I do sound like an old man because unfortunately, sometimes I feel like it. I get a bad back. And when I'm spending more time in the car than I'm actually spending in my own home, I need a firm seat. So I absolutely love these seats. They're far firmer on my back. So I feel like it's just going to reduce the number of times I need to go and see the sports masseuse. Couldn't think of the word, could I? The passenger seat also goes up and down as well as the driver's seat. And that's where I spend most of my time. So again, really important for me because I don't like my legs stretched out. My driving like a bad boy days are over. I like to be a little bit higher and it just seems to keep my back in check. My third big like, strange, I know, is the wheel. The steering wheel is a lot thinner on this car. And at the beginning, it was a bit uncomfortable compared to the Peugeot. It had a bit of a chunky, big and chunky wheel. This one's a bit thinner. And I, I, at the beginning, I felt a bit more, a bit uncomfortable, but then I realized I could actually see the whole dash, you know? And that was strange for me. I can actually see the speed armature, I could see everything on there. But then I realized it's a way better design. So I, I love that, far easier. Um, and then students aren't having to move the wheel up and down and all side to side quite so much. It just makes life a little bit easier. They can see as well. And they can see over as well. If you get someone who's a bit shorter, hello. They can see over and see out the window without having to raise the seat too much. Yeah, all round winner. And my final one, and as I say, this does sound a bit strange, the cup holder. The cup holders have four little holdy things. They actually hold a cup. So rather than my coffee going in the cup, and then falling over at some point during the lesson or moving around and coffee getting spilled and then it dries up and I've got to somehow give that the old wet wipe clean before the driving test, otherwise the examiner sees it and they're like, what the hell's that? Now my coffee stays firmly in the cup. Another great design feature, which I absolutely love. And I very quickly have to say it, thank you very much to all my patrons. James Dillon, my newest patrons, really appreciate the support. Thank you for keeping the wheels turning broom broom so now some other bits of why i really like this car the first one is i wasn't expecting this and that's that the miles per gallon is very similar to the peugeot and i wasn't expecting this because when i first bought the car it said 48 miles per gallon i didn't like the looks of that but i also didn't realize i had it in sport mode so there you go so we've got well above 50 between 50 and 55 miles to the gallon which is very similar to the peugeot so that is a lovely tasty surprise considering the price of fuel. This is a 2019 match golf, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know. Don't ask me what that means, because I haven't got a clue. And I've actually forgotten to mention that, actually, this car just looks so much better than the Peugeot. It's unreal. And that in itself is just an absolute win when I'm spending this much time in the car. I do also absolutely love the alloys in this car, although I do panic about them. So I am going to look at those new alligator supporty alloy defender things. If anyone's got any information about those, please let me know in the comments below because I keep hearing whispers down the grapevine, but I don't actually know anything about them apart from they're supposed to protect your alloys. Now, as you can see from my alloys, my wheels are quite high profile. So, so far, even though students are trying to polish the curb, with my diamond car alloys they are failing miserably at the moment but someone will manage it i am sure so my advice is make sure you've got high profile tires is that the right word high profile big tires 
if you're using it as a learner car. And I don't know if you remember, but I used to use those stick-on mirrors an awful lot on my mirrors. I used to hype about them, yeah, stick-on mirrors. And I don't actually use them anymore. I'm not gonna bother with them at all. And that's, there's two reasons for that. One, when you put the car into reverse, the side mirror automatically drops down so you can see the curb, which is amazing for parallel parks and reverse bay parking. And on top of that, we have a reverse bay camera and that in itself is amazing. Now, before I go any further about the reverse camera, I do still have to make sure that students understand how to reverse using just the mirrors because chances are they're not gonna have a reverse camera on their first car. I also have to make it very clear, the camera isn't gonna show us all three windows when we're looking behind us. So so we have to make sure we're still looking behind us far more than anything else when we're going backwards to make sure we don't run anyone or anything over. But saying that amazing tool, absolutely love it. First of all, it has the red line that clearly shows us where we need to stop, especially if there's an object behind us, such as a car, such as a wall, anything else. Very easy, simple. It has the beeper, which is very clear and consistent with the student. And it has these four little green lines, which actually show you when you need to start turning for the front wheels or the back wheels to go into the bay properly. And that is an absolute gem. It's been so much easier for students to park using this method. Absolutely love it. The gears in this car, don't ask me why, because I can't actually tell you why. They are just so much smoother to get into gear. I, th I don't think you have to push it as hard. I don't think they go as far. It just feels far cleaner, up, down, left, right sort of style. You know, like a, like a PlayStation 5 controller compared to a PlayStation 1 controller. They just don't compare. Um, I also like the reverse, even though it's in a different place. The reverse, you actually have to push the stick down and across. And there's not been many instances, but there has been a couple with the Peugeot where students, where you didn't have to push it down or anything at all. You could just ram that stick from third gear straight across into reverse. That wasn't a comfortable sensation where I have to quickly get the clutch down in panic before they bring it up. So yeah, so I like this feature because it means they can't accidentally go into reverse. Oh, it's far harder. As I mentioned before in the previous video, automated handbrake, big laugh. Wouldn't change it for the world. It takes a lot of boring hassle out of the job. Saying that, I do still have to make sure they know how to use a handbrake without the automated handbrake on, because again, they're probably not gonna buy a car with an automatic handbrake. But even so, great feature to have, makes life a lot easier, takes some of the boring work out of the job. And also very effective. But we have come across a few hiccups along the way that I didn't expect. And the first one is the bite in the Peugeot, you could have actually just brought the clutch up without any gas at all, and it would just go. It would just, no problem at all. You can just throw it, throw the clutch about, whatever, you're gone. This car, no. If you're not setting that gas correctly, and you bring that clutch up, you are stalling all day. So, first got this car, and every single student stalled um, for the majority of their first lesson, switching over just because of that. But I don't think it's a bad thing. I think this car is probably just more similar to every other car in the world other than the Peugeot 208. It's just taking some getting used to, some adjusting, which is something I didn't expect. The other thing that's taken some adjusting, the automatic handbrake, when you actually bring it up to the bite point, there's a very small, there's about two millimeter space where the handbrake comes off before you have the bite. If the student manages to find that perfect sweet spot and they're on a hill, they will start rolling back if they just hold the clutch there instead of continuing to bring it up. So that's taking a little bit of practice, a little bit of extra work occasionally just to deal with. The Golf does also have automatic lights, which are nice and easy to see rather than being on the stick where you, you might have missed them. Um, I'll notice straight away if someone accidentally turns that off. People can't accidentally turn it off quite as easily, so that's nice. Uh, it also has automatic wipers. You don't ever have to turn them on. They just, as long as you don't touch it, they just stay on automatic. Beautiful. Take some really simple things out that just get very dull. Extra features, this car does have seat warmers, which obviously I'm not using at the moment, maybe in the dead of winter, but who knows. It also has Android and Apple Play, which I absolutely love because it just means I don't have to stick the phone to a silly magnet. Instead, it can be plugged in, put away, hunky-dory, balamori, yay. So it's just far cleaner. Yeah, absolutely love that. And speaking of far cleaner and being able to put phone away, etc. another big love for this car, the number of pockets and places it has, you know, it's got the compartment just for your sunglasses right here. Amazing, amazing idea. What did I thought of that? How many times do you lose your sunglasses or leave them somewhere or forget where you put them and then they get squashed, crushed? You gotta buy another pair. Everything closes. You know, everything has a place and closes. I think that's really clean, tidy. And the amount of cubby holes and hidey holes, you can actually find a place for everything. Big love. One little dislike is that it's got a perfect place for your phone to put your phone away 
once it's plugged in, but I've got the Pixel 6 Pro and it's just a little bit too big, so it doesn't quite close on my phone. Sad face. But I will get over it. Uh, the boot space in this car, I think this car is ever so slightly wider than the Peugeot because I have to take the kids to school every day or most days and the scooter, you have to, you just have to try and really wiggle it in, wiggle it in, you know? Um, this car, you don't. Scooter fits in nicely, which if you've got a family, quite an important feature. I'm sure you'll agree. Get the scooter in the car. One surprise feature that did catch me out, in fact, it still catches me out, I'll be honest. Um, I've done it twice now. I had to very quickly three-point turn down there. I know my road, you know, so I was quickly three-point turning. We're out in the sticks, no brick walls, just very tall grass, and I'm very quickly three-point turning, and suddenly the car beeps and slams the anchors on, just handbrake, boop, car stopped skidding. And I'm thinking, what, what's going on? It's because it sensed the tall grass on the corner and it thought that I was hitting a brick wall, so it just slammed the anchors on. And I still didn't really figure at the time what was happening, so I very quickly carried on with my forward boat, uh, three-point turn and went forward. Then it sensed more tall grass, slammed the anchors on again. So I was a bit like, oh, okay. And it's happened again, reversing, and there's a little bit of bosch, and I would have just reversed past the bosch because you know, I need to reverse. Um, but the car slammed the anchors on sense in the bush. So that's interesting. Interesting feature. I like it. Going to stop people reversing into brick walls. But, you know, something to be aware of if you're driving around. I'll be honest with you. In the past, I've always said, you know, I've always thought that golf's very boring, very plain shape. Nothing changes with them. Um, it's a real safe bet. Not for me, you know. But now I feel really stupid, you know, because I could see I was right. Perhaps it is boring and perhaps it is a safe bet, but that's because it works and it works well. Everything that's designed in this car is designed so much better than the Peugeot 208 that I had. It's unbelievable. It's lovely that it's got a sports mode and an economy mode as well. Not that I'll need the sports mode at all, but at the moment, no regrets in this car whatsoever. However, we will see in three years time, maybe two years time, if there is any change. What are your thoughts on the Golf versus Peugeot situation? What do you prefer and why do you prefer it? I am Josh, the driving instructor, and I am out. I'm gone. And I'll go.